To the winter solstice I am symposium and today we have with us Dr. Davina S. Kotolsky. She's a licensed psychologist, life coach, spiritual counselor, best-selling and award-winning author and speaker and nationally known LGBT rights leader. She is passionate about helping people overcome obstacles to make their dreams come true. She has an international life coaching practice, leads teleseminars, live workshops, and facilitates online coaching programs on following your courageous heart, spiritual growth, and authentic self-expression. She is the author of Why You Should Give a Damn About Gay Marriage, Love Warriors, The Rise of Marriage Equality Movement, and Why It Will Prevail, Behind Barbed Eyes, and How to Come Out of the Closet and Into Your Power. And we met with another conference that I'm doing, which is an LGBTQ conference, and we connected right away. I read her book. She read my book. We both wrote beautiful endorsements. And she's of the spiritual heart, and, and which is so great in the 12-step com- or the, the recovery community that, uh, that there's something way broader and something way more than um, what we thought 100 years ago. And so I'm really honored that we share that same passion about how to get people to wake up, how to get people to recover. And she's going to um, talk to us a little bit about her work and, and herself. So take it over. All right. Thank you, Renee. And I just, I really appreciate you inviting me here today. And I love today's topic, you know, how to navigate the winds of change and, and what you're working on and, and what you're sharing. And I love the notion of what you shared, um, the, the, the idea of the courageous, peaceful warrior. Um, I absolutely believe in the power of love and in the power of being courageous and and that through peace and love, we can change the world. And you mentioned my book, Love Warriors, uh, that came out in 2009 and the power of love. We, we, you know, change the marriage equality laws that were unfair. And I'm so pleased that those efforts have, um, have remained and, and through the work that we did and that even today, uh, marriage equality is still a reality in the United States. And as of a few hours ago, it is now a, requ- uh, a reality in Australia. So they have marriage equality as of today down under. So that's, that's very exciting. And that shows the power of love. So I'm very, very much interested in, in the power of love. Um, today, I, I want to talk about the power of love to shift the vibration on the planet. Um, and as we begin by shifting the vibration within our within ourselves and connecting with that love within each of us. So, you know, we've heard of the terminology or the phrase, you know, as above, so below. And there's also, you know, we've heard, many of us have heard that so within, so without, right? Um, that, uh, that what goes on in here influences what goes on out there. And we're living in these incredible times of change. Um, we've got fires, we've got earthquakes, uh, hurricanes, uh, man-made disasters in the forms of violence and exploitation of, of the planet and people. Um, and there's just times of great unknown. And, and so there are real fears about what's happening and the uncertainty and, and what's going on in the world. And I've found, you know, and, and I'm sure you've found this, Renee, and, and the audience has found this, that um, change can choose us or we can choose change. And so in other words, right, the universe can deliver change to our doorstep in the form of, um, you know, a layoff or losing a job, being fired, losing a home, losing a loved one or a marriage, and sometimes multiple losses. And many people have just had those kinds of experiences. And sometimes there are signs um, that the universe delivers to us before a change like that, but we may not always know how to read the signs, right? Right. Um, or we may not uh, even see them. So even if we do see them, we may not know how to interpret them. We can also be proactive about change, right? We can um, begin to notice within ourselves that there are certain cycles, there are certain changes taking place within smaller things. 
Um, we can notice the tides and we can start to choose change. We can become proactive. We can start to take smaller steps or, or giant leaps to change the circumstances of our life. Um, either way, whether you're choosing change or change is choosing you, we need to learn how to listen deeply to our essence, to ourselves, so that we know how to proceed. And I refer to that as listening deeply to our hearts because our hearts are connected to love and you know, love is the force that most greatly influences the universe. Um, and that love can help guide our lives. And I'm not talking about romantic love or infatuation. I'm not talking about that kind of love. Um, so I'll say more about what kind of love I am talking about. But, we, you know, we, we want to listen to our hearts. Um, and then we're motivated from love, from compassion, from appreciation, these higher forms of love. And, you know, science learning that our emotions create coherent fields, right? They create a coherent field in our body and that coherent field impacts our minds and, and our health. Um, on a quantum physics level, scientists are proving what, you know, the indigenous cultures have been saying all along, that we're all related. Everything is related, you know. Um, I know you mentioned it in your book, the, the Lakota saying, mitako uh, yeoyasin, um, you know, which essentially means that Everything is my relative, right? Um, mystics, Kabbalists, shamans have been trying to teach us this, that everything we do is linked up. It's all interrelated, right? We, we know this. Um, and, and now it's funny, you know, scientists are finally getting it. Oh, everything's related. Yes. Uh, so we know this. We know that our emotions and our beliefs, they influence our body. They influence the field around us. Um, our thoughts and feelings of love can create harmony and coherence within our cells, within our heartbeat, right? Um, and that our feelings of hate, anger, and frustration, you know, create these choppy waves. They create incoherence or chaos. Uh, we can look at Emoto's work on, on the water, and, and that shows us what that looks like on the uh, molecular level with water. So we know that our emotions, our feelings, they impact our bodies, and they impact the field around us, right? That goes beyond the personal level. Our emotions create the world that we live in. Now, as a life coach and a spiritual practitioner, I've tried to find sort of a shorthand to describe this reality and the importance of connecting with our heart and, and this powerful love on a daily basis. And I, I call it following your courageous heart. Sometimes I call it unleashing your courageous heart. And the courage that I'm talking about isn't about being reckless, okay? It's about, being, it's about taking action guided by love, guided by the heart. And the word courage comes from the Latin word core um, and the French word cour. I, I not, cannot pronounce mm. French very well. Um, I'll leave it to the French. Mm. Um, but, it, it, but it means heart, right? In both Latin and French, these words mean heart. And so courage is about heart. So, for example, um, the expression to take heart means to revive one's courage. So courage is about having heart. It's about following your heart and living in society from your heart and following your heart requires an act of courage. It just does. So again, the courage I'm talking about here is the courage to make choices for your life that are in alignment with your essence, with your authentic self and its desires. And it's about choosing to live your life from the wisdom of your heart. So a courageous heart, uh, again, this isn't about romantic love. A courageous heart is a, a heart that is appreciative, that is trusting, and that is forgiving. So to be in our courageous heart, we also must be in the present moment, okay? In connecting with gratitude, trust, forgiving ourselves and others so that we can be wholehearted. So following your courageous heart is about understanding the difference also between being guided by race consciousness, which is, you know, roughly all the, all the noise and the chaos of the human mind and, and the buzz that's going on outside of us and the mass media, the, the news, things like that. Um, in family therapy, I'm also a psychologist, and in, in family therapy or family systems theory, uh, we would call that like the undifferentiated ego mass. Uh, which is basically the mass unconsciousness on the planet. It's just what's out there, all the reaction, etc. So we can be guided by that, the chaos and the unconsciousness, or we can begin to choose to live guided by faith and a higher consciousness. And 
which one sounds better to you is may depend on your experience. Yes. So if you've never lived from your higher consciousness or your heart, sorry, did you want to say something? No. Okay. Um, okay. If, you, if you've never lived from your higher consciousness uh, before, it can sound extremely risky, right? Flaky, even dangerous, because if you haven't experienced that palpable presence of, of spirit, you know, Renee, what the, the winds that you talk about and the winds of spirit, if you have not experienced that, if you have not experienced the loving hand of the universe supporting you and guiding you, just surrendering and, and turning yourself over to this can seem very unnerving. Like, like what is this? And, and is this magical thinking? And, and is this believing in Santa Claus? Things like that. So, no, it's not. Um, I want to give you an example of a, a client of mine who recently went through this process. So she's just returned from India where she attended a, a yoga training. Now, prior to her experience um, going to India in this process of preparing, she had never known what it was like to follow her courageous heart, right? Living in a logical mind, that kind of thing. And in our work together, she found her heart, she found her courage, and then she let her heart lead and she made preparation to quit her job and to undertake this several month training in India. And when she returned back to the United States, she shared her transformation with me and said that one of the biggest realizations that she had was that by taking this leap of faith on, this, on her journey, she found that the universe supported her every step of the way. Mm -hmm. So when she returned back to the States, um, she shared how, uh, you know, when, wherever she went, when a need arose, it was met, right? So she got stranded at the airport for 12 hours different Indian families came over to ask her if she needed anything. They didn't want her to be, you know, they knew she, they saw that she was alone and they didn't want her to be unsafe or taken advantage of. And so, you know, they, they kept her in, in safe keeping. Um, everywhere she went, people loaned her their phone if she needed it to call somebody when her phone was dead, things like this. So she was amazed at the kindness of strangers and, and just the way the universe showed up to support her and, um, you know, through providing these earth angels for her. And until you've had an experience of being deeply guided and, and supported by life in the universe, it can be difficult to trust, right? However, you can't have an experience like that until you let go and allow the universe to support you. So just like a trust fall, if you've ever done one of those, you can't experience being caught until you take the first step and let go, right? And um, however, in this context, uh, when, you do, you, when you do let go, you learn the power of, and the wisdom of, the, of the wisdom of living from your heart, from that place of flow, not simply listening to the logic or, you know, what the TV, the media, um, your, you know, your parents, society, politicians, et cetera, tell you how to live or what to do. So um, following your, your courageous heart, you have to understand the difference uh, between those, you know, outside voices and the inside voice. You have to understand the difference also between the drive of the ego, the logical mind, and the pull of the soul. The soul is going to pull you, um, whereas the ego is going to drive you or push you. So when we're in our courageous heart, we're responding to the pull of the soul, not the drive or the push of the ego. And um, so again, following your courageous heart, it's about being able to discern the drive of the mind and the ego and the fear, right? Being moved from fear versus being moved from faith, from the heart's callings, from the soul's calling, from inspiration. So for example, my client's ego would have told her to stay engaged in her stable job with the status and climbing the ladder. So releasing her job and traveling to India to, was, a, was following a heart calling. And ultimately, when you follow your courageous heart, you're stepping outside of race consciousness and, and you're observing, right? You're observing what, what's being said, what's the buzz that's going on out there, and, and is it real? And this is what that great, wonderful Jewish mystic teacher, you know, Jew, uh, Jesus, you know, he was a Jewish mystic teacher. This is what he said when, you know, this is what he meant when he said, we are in the world, but not of it, right? We want we are in it, we can take a step outside of it. And I love that because it's about listening to your deeper wisdom. It's about listening to that still small voice within you and following it, which I call following your courageous heart. And 
you know, following your courageous heart is connecting to your essence, your inner knowing. And when you follow your heart, your courageous heart, you take action from that heart's wisdom and you go where your heart wants to lead rather than staying small or comfortable. And you become the writer of your own destiny. So there were several times on my path um, when, you know, I needed to make a choice. And those choices involved staying small, hiding, remaining comfortable, or listening to that deeper calling, that invitation to expand um, and to listen to spirit and move in the direction that I was being invited to go in through spirit, that expansion. And it wasn't that what I was doing was inauthentic. It was just that there came a point where the path that I was on was no longer the path of the courageous heart. You know, we, we continue to grow and unfold. And so something that fit us at one point of our life may not fit us anymore, or we may kind of come to the end of, of that growth period, and it's time to take the next step. So I was being called to a bigger destiny, to greater consciousness, or the next step in my soul's evolution. And I think the first time that I was really clear about that was when I was 14 years old and I realized I was gay. And when I realized that, um, it was very confronting and, and overwhelming because society, you know, at that time, it was like 1984. That was not, that was a more supportive time than any time before that time, but it certainly was not, you know, an open embracing time like it, it is now. And even now it's still challenging to come out um, because there's, there is still so much frowning against that and whatever. So I remember that I had this epiphany and the epiphany was because I was considering suicide. Like, you know, I'm going to take myself out. Um, and, but I had this epiphany and I realized that God had made me this way and that I could receive my being gay as a gift. Right. This was a gift of uniqueness. This was a gift from God of, you know, my creator and I being God's creation I could either accept this gift of gift from God, or I could refuse the gift and take my life. And I decided to accept the gift. And as part of my accepting the gift, my decision was that I would never hide. And I would never allow myself to, to be ashamed. And I would not do things, you know, to the best of my ability to, to hurt myself. And prior to that time, I was drinking to try to make those feelings go away. And so it was a conscious decision at that moment that I would stop drinking. And it did take a little bit of time to get to that point, you know, but I did quit at a very young age, um, about a year later, I guess, because I just got it. I just got it that this was a gift and I needed to embrace this gift. And so I came out and what I realized was that it was far more painful to hide and to pretend to be something that I wasn't than to be out and to deal with the derision. I mean, I was bullied um, physically, emotionally, verbally. Uh, those things were real. Those things happened. But I realized that that outside bullying was much easier to deal with than the inside bullying and, and the, the shame and hiding. So it was a very profound experience. Um, later, uh, the next time the choice was when I realized that it was time to put spirit first with regard to my life's work. And I was working in a federal prison as a psychologist and I feel like I was doing great work. Um, I loved what I did, but there were some things that were not, they were no longer in alignment. And one of them was that uh, we were all considered correctional workers first and we had to qualify on weapons and do things like that. And that's fine for some people. I have no problem with that. But I realized that where I was in my spiritual growth and development was that I did not want to, to have a gun in my hand, didn't want to be a part of that. And so, and I realized that, that as part of my spiritual path, that meant that there were things that I, I needed to release the job and go be able to put spirit first. There were other things that were being asked of us that were more correctional. And I just realized, you know, I'm here to be a healer. And these things are not congruent at this time with my being a healer. And I need to let them go. And, uh, and so I left my six-figure government job. And, and literally at the beginning of the Great Recession in 2008, and they asked me if I wanted to change my mind. And I said no, because I knew it was time to, to trust and to, to let spirit 
take me to where I needed to go. Because if you're having these callings, it's a reason. It's not your mind playing tricks on you. You're being invited to the next level of your life. And so it's so important to listen. Now, there were other times that, that I was being asked to do different things and made different changes in my life and choices. And each time, fear arose. So it's not that it's not about feeling, you know, it's not about being fearless, okay? You can feel fear. And the courage is about taking the steps anyway, right? And you've heard that, you know, it's, it's about feeling the fear, but doing it anyway. So if you're feeling fear, that doesn't mean you're a failure. It just means, hey, fear comes up because things are unknown and uncertain. But you keep breathing and you keep moving forward. So you don't have to let fear stop you. I also learned through affirmative prayer um, and meditation how to connect with that peace that surpasses human understanding that maybe you've heard about before. And my goodness, the first time I, I felt that, it was amazing, that palpable presence of love and peace, regardless of the circumstances. It's like standing in the, you know, kind of going to some of Renee's uh, metaphors with, with the winds. It's like standing in the eye of the hurricane, right? And there's this peaceful, very peaceful place. Things are going on around, but there you are in that peaceful place. So, and, and what I learned from that was witness consciousness, right? Which is when you observe, when you witness your thoughts, when you witness your circumstances, you can stand back and take a step back from the human drama. And witness consciousness allowed me to tap into a deeper reserve inside myself. So meditation, witness consciousness, affirmative prayer, these are powerful tools that I recommend to anyone to overcome fear and disappointment and grief. Also spiritual surrender, right? That's a very powerful one. Then that's helped me very much to overcome um, hardship, uh, having faith, and not the faith that everything will work out. Because you know what? Not everything works out like we want it to, and uh, or how our egos want it to. And that can be very hard to be with. That can be we can have a lot of grief around that. We can have a lot of feelings when things don't work out the way that we want them to. But I'm talking about faith on the soul level. And that comes from a belief that whatever is happening in my life, it's because the universe loves me so much that it knows my deepest heart's desires and my soul's calling, and it's orchestrating things in my life from that place for my highest good. Even when I look around and I don't understand what's happening, right? Um, and, and, and that information, the whys, they might be above my pay grade, so to speak, you know? So I may only have some of the answers to why things happen when I'm in the next realm, right? So things may be happening in your life that you're like, I don't understand. I don't get this. And when we ask the question, why, 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 we can absolutely drive ourselves insane. So, and I've done some of that. I've had some years where I just drove myself insane with why questions and I had to keep surrendering and keep trusting. And then oh, the path just continues to unfold and magnificent things show up. So that's something that, uh, that I would recommend is, is to just know, you know, that the universe loves you so much that it really does have your, your highest and best in, in mind. Another thing is reading spiritual and self-help books, okay, and getting support, working with healers, working with shamans, life coaches, uh, spiritual practitioners. So, you know, for years, um, I've worked regularly with acupuncturists or therapists, a shaman, worked with a shaman for 20 years, um, an astrologist. I have my own life coach, my own spiritual practitioner. And I loved it. Marian Williamson, I heard her say this a few years ago, that you know we can't priest ourselves. So we each need someone else that can hold that space for us, right? Just like a doctor, we don't want a doctor to have to, I'm sure that, that some doctors can operate on themselves, but that to yourself, right? Get the support, get, have, have a team of people around you that can help you you know, see your highest good and when you can't, right, when you get lost. So um, I feel like I've been so lucky because I've been able to connect with so many amazing healers um, and teachers in this lifetime, just just amazing people. Um, and, and then also through books and teachings, I've been able to connect with, you know, people on the other side of Yogananda, right? Um, all, Napoleon Hill, all kinds of people, Florence Scovel Shin, amazing healers, Ernest Holmes. Um, so I think one of the most powerful things I want to kind of leave you with is, uh, is being with stillness. So one of the things that I believe is the, one of the most powerful things you can do to improve your life. 
yeah, is to take time to yourself and to be in stillness, okay? Whether it's in your home or out in nature, stillness is so essential for us to stay grounded and to stay connected to our heart, to ourself, to our own authenticity, to our own inner calling, right? There's a lot of noise around us. There's our loved ones, right? When we're in their field, their emotions are influencing us too, their needs, their desires. We've got to be able to take time to ourselves and connect to that stillness. And you can do formal sitting meditation or you can simply, you know, sit and breathe deeply, you know, letting your eyes close and breathing into your heart. Right? That's just such a great practice to just, hmm, just breathe into your heart chakra and slow down, connect. Um, if you're in nature, you know, one of the beautiful things about being still in nature is that, you know, you become more aware of your senses. You might feel the, you know, like the breeze on your skin. You might feel the warmth of the sun on your skin. You might smell the ocean or the trees or the flowers or the mountain air. It's just, you know, uh, one of my favorite smells is, you know, like when the, the sun heats up the pine needles when I'm in, out in the, you know, a, evergreen forest it's just it's just gorgeous right i'm going to sit next to a creek or a lake and just listening to the sound of the water these are really powerful places to be sacred sanctuaries in nature where we can get still and when you get still you allow yourself to relax and when we relax our shoulders drop right we allow our, our bodies to slow down it's just a really beautiful thing. We become more present. We allow ourselves to be present. And then again, you can feel your heart opening because when we're moving, we're doing so much, sometimes we, you know, even on the computer and various things, our posture becomes one of, you know, self-protection, right? We close off our chest. We close our heart chakra. We close our heart. And when we're in nature, ah, oh, right, we just open up. We breathe more deeply. We connect with our heart space. And, you know, that may sound woo-woo or goofy or whatever, but, God, it's, it's so real and it's so powerful. And I invite you to give yourself that gift. And when you're connecting, when you're allowing your heart to open, you can amplify that feeling by having courageous appreciation, just getting in touch with what can I be grateful for, you know? My fingers, my hands, the breath, you know, the clothes on my body the roof over my head, all of these things, there's so much to be grateful for, right? And, um, and when you do that, you begin to feel the field around you and you begin to feel that palpable presence, that life force, that, that divine matrix, and Greg Braden calls it the divine matrix. You can feel that space around you become alive with peace. It's the most incredible feeling, right? So I invite you to, to find that for yourself, to connect with that, to make time for that. Because when you're in that space, you begin to, to become more expansive. You feel safer in this universe. You realize you're more than your body. You're more than your thoughts. And you become one with that palpable spirit, with that presence of peace. And you may even begin to feel yourself being breathed by the universe, supported by the universe. And, uh, and I invite you when you do that, or just invite you to do this generally, to, to take time to put your hand on your heart and just say, I am love, and I am loved. I am love. I am loved. And this is what it means to connect with your courageous heart. This is what it means to be on the journey of the courageous heart. This is what it means to, to be connected with spirit and with yourself. So... That's what I want to offer you today. And just I want to invite you to begin to, I mean, I'm sure many of you that are listening are already doing many of these things. And so for those of you that are already doing this, just remind you to, to keep doing it. Because when we've been on this path for a while, sometimes some of those, those things that we learn early on, we stop pressing right, or the things that seem so basic, we're, we're wanting the next experience, right? Especially if you've had mystic experiences or openings, wow, those cosmic expansions are so amazing that sometimes we clamor for more of those and we forget to, to connect with the, the basic 
most important spiritual practices that have allowed us to open up to those cosmic experiences. And for those of you that are just beginning this, um, these, these are just great ways to, to connect to yourself. And, you know, the, the heart is the very first muscle that we develop. And the heart is connected to the, the beat of the earth, right? To the, the Schumann resonance, the natural heartbeat of the earth. And, you know, I'm trying to connect a lot of things here, but I think the, the last thing I want to say is just, you know, in, in indigenous culture, um, in, in Native American culture, the drumming is a one beat. And it's that one beat of Mother Earth that we're all connected to. And so when you go back and you connect to your heart, you're connected to the oneness of all life. So on that, I'd like to say thank you. And uh, thank you, Renee. <coughs> How beautiful that was. And since we're so aligned anyway, it's like I figured, well, why have a conversation? Because we absolutely think we think so much alike. And the and, and I just would like to really reiterate as, uh, you know, as we come through this process is that this Selma is running the busiest week of the year. And so this is that's not the time you slow up on these practices. It's the time you double up on those practices. Yes. And I call it a wind walk when you go out and feel the breeze and then, you know, walk from there. And so all of these practices that Davina has shared with us are, are truly the gifts of spirit. And this is the time of spirit. And, you know, we're really hopeful that you can go out and take one of these. There is one question I want to ask you, though, uh, <laughs> is that, you know, I work with a lot of people and I don't always necessarily tell them to run out and leave their job. So I don't want, yes. there's probably thousands of people listening to this. And when you said she prepared to leave her job, not yes, that she gave right. up. And so I think that's a mm -hmm. distinction that you might just want to clear up with people. Yeah, absolutely. And, and in my work with people, <clears throat> what your, your change may be. Okay. So first of all, you have to know what kind of person you are and how much change and risk you can be with. Right. Because if you just jump, Without, without a net, right? Um, you need to know how to be with the free fall. Because anytime we're making transition, there is a period of, of free fall. And uh, so you need to know how to be with that free fall until the net appears or until your parachute is pulled, etc. Otherwise, you'll scare the hell out of yourself and you'll never want to take another step again. <laughs> so thank you for saying that. I'm sorry, yeah, I no, a bit I of a cough that. here. I know. I'm still getting a little cold. Hopefully there's not a lot of people who are homesick watching this in bed, but they might be. So, and, and again, that's <laughs> like that other thing where we experience life on life's terms. We can be yes. happy when we're sick. You know, yes. I mean, it just goes without saying. Well, we that's kind cool. of ran out of time here, but I did, you were just so eloquently running this, this beautiful um, through the woods with the pine needles and the yeah. sun and all of that. And, and I didn't, I wanted to hear every, I was sitting here hanging on to every word you were saying because it just so resonated with my courageous heart. Oh, thank you, Renee. And, 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 you know, there's probably a lot of authors out there listening too. I mean, we both have books coming out right now. And which book is coming out now for you next? Or did it just come out? So, so I, I'm working, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm working with Sounds True um, to uh, bring a courageous heart book forward. So that is uh, in the works here. Great. And, and I imagine so, it's a great way to hold me in your prayer. <laughs> We're going to hold her in our prayer, hold yeah. her in our vision. <clears throat> and so she can take the next jump forward in her own, in her own life and career. Um, and I think you're so wonderful. And we didn't even get to the gay stuff because when I was coming out in the seventies, it was like that there was just so mm -hmm. much things that I was a chef. And so Finally, when I was in New York City, and I saw that what was on the plate was going to be what people were talking about, I could put that on the back burner. And then I never had to look back uh -huh. at it until three years ago when my boss said, hey, we want you to uh, do the Finding Freedom Symposium. And they're like, you know, what is, why? You know, and, <laughs> and you and I both know spirit <laughs> always has to help you find freedom. Agenda. <laughs> right, exactly. And, and, yeah. and so... So we have all of these things in common and you really summed it up really well. And, and I look forward to, to spending more time with you on more summits and maybe. Thank you, Renee. Together. So. Yeah. 
Me too. And I just, I, I love your book. I'm so excited for your readers. I got to read, you know, in, in advance and it's just a beautiful book. I love the, the um, there's so much. It's this, it's so deep. Um, and I love the wind walks. I love the connection to all the different winds. And there's, there's some really powerful teachings. Um, as I was saying before, your, your book is the real deal. And, uh, and I think you should be very proud. Um, and I, and Folks, you are going to get so much out of this book. So I recommend that you pre-order it if you haven't already. Uh, you're going to love this book and get it for your friends. Uh, it is a very powerful book, very healing book. And it's a kind of book that you can go back to again and again, not just a one-time read. It has so many references and resources in it. You're going to want to pick it up and refer to it again and again. So I'm very excited for your book coming out. <clears throat> And I want to say, I'm going to say the same thing back to you because one would think, oh, you're becoming a Hay House author. You've got, you know, you're, you're driving down the highway with the world at your, as your oyster. And I learned a lot about that fear, that jumping off. I've had a job for four years that's allowed me the freedom to write. Mm -hmm. And I love everything I do, but it may not be following my courageous heart to keep absolutely everything and 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 it, it is that fear like how am i going to pay the health insurance how am i gonna how am i gonna how am i gonna so your book was really really helpful for me when i thought wow she quit her job and she went off yeah. to venice to paint like good for you <laughs> so i think we're mutual fans and i'm really glad and for everybody at home listening uh, stay tuned. And if you got here by not connecting to the link, if you go to the imsymposium.com, you'll be able to get the playbacks for all of the entire uh, summit and other gifts as well from, from Davina and other, other presenters. Yeah. Do you have a gift for a chapter or? Yeah. Good. So, yeah. So, so, so basically, oh, sorry. So yeah. So folks will get the seven steps to follow your courageous heart and um, live the life of your dreams. And I'm...